In this video we're going to explain the difference between all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive and 4x4 four four. and we're also going to take a look at why governments around the world often mandate certain classes of vehicle should be driven on certain classes of track and in particular recently in the United States a owner of a Subaru was given a warning letter for driving his Subaru across a four-wheel drive track when that should have been for high clearance vehicles only. So before we start, we've got to understand that with many things in the world, there is a commonly accepted definition and there's a technical definition. So for example, what would you say this is? Most people would say it's a GPS. Well, that is not correct. It's a GPS receiver. GPS is the whole system of satellites uh, um, and ground stations, etc. This is just the receiver part of it. But I could say to you, I want to buy a GPS, or this is my GPS. You'd know what I was talking about. So that's an example of a commonly accepted definition, which is actually wrong. Same way EV, we talk about electric vehicles. Well, most of the time we mean battery electric vehicles and Battery electric vehicles are a subset of EVs and people confuse mass and weight. The list goes on. So let's start off with the concept of driven wheels or driving wheels. Now a vehicle might have four wheels, but that doesn't mean to say that the engine turns all four wheels. There's something called four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive and rear-wheel drive. This is what I mean. To demonstrate the difference between two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive, I have this Lego model which is four wheels and at the moment it's an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive mode because it's driving all four wheels. Now I'm going to convert it to front-wheel drive. So you can see only the front two wheels are driving and that means it's four by two, four wheels, two driving. And now I'm going to convert it to rear wheel drive only. So you can see again at 4x2, but RWD, so only the rear wheels are driving. So what we're going to do is look at the technical definitions of those terms first, and then the commonly accepted uses, which are different. So let's start off with what is 4x4. Now for that we need to understand the X by X concept. So here we've got a vehicle with four wheels, two are driven, so we call that a four by two. Four wheels, two driven. Pretty simple. Then we've got, or we can say that's two wheel drive because two wheels are driving. Now two wheel drive just means two wheels driving, it doesn't say anything about how many total wheels the vehicle has. We can also call this rear wheel drive because the back wheels are driving or abbreviate that to RWD. Now similarly we can take the exact same car but this time we're going to drive the front wheels and that is still a 4x2, still four wheels, two driving. We still call it a two-wheel drive but now it's an FWD and the F stands for front wheel drive not four-wheel drive um, and that's the difference between the two. So there's your X by X concept. So what is a 4x4? Four four? Well again the literal definition is four wheels, four driven, that is all it means. So that's all you've got. All four wheels driven. How they're driven doesn't matter. There's nothing in the literal definition of a 4x4 four four that says it has to have a transfer case or low range or mud tires or anything else. Just four wheels, four driven, that is it. We'll get to the commonly accepted usage in a moment. So what is four wheel drive then? Is it different to 4x4? Four four? Well, yes it is. That's when we've got four wheels driven. So if we've got this drivetrain, four wheels all are driven, that is four wheel drive. If we've got six wheels or three axles and four are driven, that is also four wheel drive. And if we've got six axles, two driven, well that is two wheel drive. And if we've got um, three axles or six wheels and all are driven, then that's not four wheel drive, it is six wheel drive. We can also call that a six by six and a six by, by two. So that's the amount of wheels with the amount of driving wheels, six wheels, two driven. You see how this works now. So what then is AWD? Well, AWD is all wheels driven. And an example again, yes, we come back to that drivetrain. It is also all wheel drive because every single wheel is driven, hence it is all wheel drive. And there's nothing in that definition, again, that says it has to have any off-road capability or anything. This is not all wheel drive because it's got six wheels, but it doesn't drive the front two, therefore it can't be all wheel drive. Same for that one, but this one, the six by six, is all wheel drive because all wheels are driven. Now for the commonly used definitions. 
This is what people would understand when you say to them four by four or four wheel drive. Now this does vary a little bit depending on who you're talking to in the country, but generally that means four by four four wheel drive means an off-road vehicle such as that one or that one and all of these examples. So it's a vehicle with four wheels designed for rough terrain use. That's not the literal definition, but that's commonly what people understand it to be. Now what is AWD, what is that commonly understood to mean? Well, that means a road oriented vehicle that always drives all four wheels, like the Subaru, um, often Audis, even some Teslas are all wheel drive if they've got a motor in the front, motor in the rear, and even this van. Now there's no off-road capability in these vehicles at all. It's purely done for on-road grip, but they are all wheel drive. You can also argue, in the literal sense, they are also four wheel drive or four by fours and these can be all-wheel drive as well. So that's what people commonly understand those two terms to mean. Now what about all-wheel drive mode for 4x4s? Isn't that a contradiction in terms? Because surely you've just said a 4x4 drives all four wheels and so does an all-wheel drive, so why do you need two? Okay, so this is why. All of these four vehicles are 4x4s, four four-wheel four drives in the commonly accepted definition of the term, which means they are designed for rough terrain use. But these two are different to those because these are what we term part-time or selectable four-wheel drive. So on road, on high traction surfaces, they will actually run in a two-wheel drive mode, only driving typically the rear wheels, and that's what you drive on road. When you are off-road, then they also engage the front wheels and they become a 4x4 in an off-road situation. So there's various names, but part-time four-wheel drive, selectable four-wheel drive, that's the sort of name you typically assign to those. Then we come to these vehicles over here, and these are all-wheel drive or full-time four-wheel drive, permanent four-wheel drive. So they can actually run an all-wheel drive mode on-road like this, and off-road they still run an all-wheel drive mode, but they do typically do something called locking a centre diff, which makes that mode equivalent to that, and that simply allows the front axle to always spin at the same rate as, as the rear axle, and therefore gives them better traction off-road than if they allowed those two axles to spin independently. This is getting a bit complex, I do have other videos where I explain that, but essentially that's the difference. All four-wheel drives, these, the part-time selectable runs run two-wheel drive on road, four-wheel drive off, and whereas these can run full-time four-wheel drive or permanent four by four at all times, and then they have a special locking mechanism when they go off-road. All right, so what is an SUV? Because I thought I'd cover that, why not? Well, back in the day, we had your sports cars and you had your off-roaders. Now the sports cars were super fun to drive but they were impractical, only put a couple of people in, not much luggage space. And then you had your off-roaders which were not great on road to drive but they were super practical, you put lots of people in, very rugged. So the marketing people thought why don't we have the best of both worlds and let's have a sport utility vehicle which marries both of them together. Now the term has been completely corrupted from its original uh, usage for the, uh, for I think a Jeep XJ Cherokee, but to me this is what a sports utility vehicle should be. I can think of no better example than the Subaru Forester XT. This is a turbocharged, very quick, sporty handling vehicle, but it's also raised a bit, it's got a great all-wheel drive system and it has some rough terrain capability, yet at the same time being pretty quick and fun to drive. So to me, that is what a sports utility vehicle should be, but that's not what the commonly um, accepted term is. So what is a SUV today? Well, the answer is pretty much anything. Anything with, with slightly raised ride height compared to a car. So you can call things like the Honda CRV, um, etc., Hyundai Santa Fe, there's names for them, soft roaders, crossovers, CUVs, all sorts of things, right? It's all essentially the same thing. Those are what we class as SUVs, but also the true off-roaders, the true four-wheel drives and four by fours, like the Land Cruiser, the Prado, Ford Everest, they are also now classified as SUVs as well. The only thing which isn't classified as an SUV 
is the road car vehicles, um, but if they had slightly raised height, suddenly they become an SUV. This is not making a lot of sense, I know. I'm just explaining the way things are. Now, the interesting thing about SUVs is that it can be any drivetrain. So you can have a two-wheel drive SUV. A lot of these are two-wheel drive. Um, even some, there's even a two-wheel drive version of the Ford Everest, which looks like a four-wheel drive. Um, and you can have on-demand four-wheel drive, and you can have, it, it doesn't matter. The drivetrain has nothing to do with the definition of an SUV. Okay, so why does the government want to regulate what car I drive where? Why should I just not be allowed to do whatever I want? Well, this, these pictures are taken from the National Parks website in the US. And you can see here, someone's just driven out and got themselves stuck. This car actually looks to me like a decent four wheel drive, but he's got himself stuck as well. Now, the land managers don't want to deal with people just going out into the wilderness and getting themselves stuck, which is why they put signs up saying, please only drive this if you're experienced and you've got supplies, you've got recovery gear, and you've got a high clearance four wheel drive able to do the job. That's why they do it. And in Australia, it's um, here's some example signs. This one quite clearly says, warnings, motorbikes, pedestrians, bikes, four wheel drives only. Hazard area, very, very clear about it. Warning, four wheel drive vehicles only past this point. Four wheel drive um, is marked track only. So it's really clear. Now in Australia, when you say four wheel drive, we kind of know what you mean. Um, and we know that even though Subaru is technically a four Subaru Forest, uh, Subaru WRX STI is technically a four wheel drive, we know not to take it on here, or we should know. So that particular letter um, to, to that Subaru owner who went on that trail, uh, here's what they said. A high clearance four wheel drive is required on motor vehicles traveling on the following roads, etc., etc., and they emphasize that. Well, this is the vehicle that the driver had there, the Subaru um, XV, or crossover as it's also known, and that is an all wheel drive, and it's an SUV. It is also technically a four wheel drive, but we wouldn't really call it that because it doesn't have the, the um, clearances and some of the traction aids which a four wheel drive normally would, unlike this Land Rover Defender. So, what's it missing? Well, um, ramp over uh, departure angle for starters, low range gearing, tire diameter, suspension travel, its ground clearance is actually quite good. So that's the class of vehicle they don't want being taken on there. Now here's the thing, these vehicles are actually really capable, particularly when they're modified. There's a huge community out there and someone who's got skill could drive one of these places that this vehicle with a less experienced driver simply couldn't go. So it's, it is about a combination of driver and vehicle, but if you're a land manager and you see a bunch of people coming up in stock standard vehicles like that, you're gonna go, yeah, probably going to end up um, being bogged and you know that's gonna be a problem for me because I'm trying to keep people safe on the land. So I can see where they're coming from, but at the same time, I can take, because I've driven these cars, I've, I've owned them and I've um, had them on press fleets and you know I've taken them on serious four wheel drive tracks, but it is more effort, requires a lot more skill. Um, so yeah, they're not ideal for, for heavy four wheel drive terrain. All right, so let's just finish off then with the technical definitions. X by X, that means number of wheels driven, so four by two, four wheels two driven. RWD, FWD, rear wheel drive, front wheel drive. 2WD two, two just means two wheel drive, doesn't matter whether it's front or rear. Four wheel drive means four wheels driving, doesn't say anything about how many total wheels there are. Four by four, four wheels, four driven. All, AWD, all wheels are driven and part-time four by four four wheel drive, two wheel drive on road, high traction surfaces, and then four wheel drive off road in lower traction surfaces. Now you commonly use definitions, four by four four wheel drive, when you see those terms, that will be someone referring to an off-road vehicle. And that may or may not have low range. There are some capable vehicles out there which don't have low range, may or may not have a transfer case, may or may not have locking diffs, but it is designed for proper off-road use. All wheel drive, Typically that, that is a vehicle um, which is, doesn't have the sort of real off-terrain capabilities of a four-wheel drive, has some capability, but is limited a bit on clearances, angles, etc. And SUV, essentially these days, that's any vehicle with slightly higher ride height than a car. So I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments. I've really only just touched on this topic. I could probably talk for another couple of hours on it, but the video has got to come to an end somewhere. Thanks for watching.